right now. Yeah, many players in this tournament we only get to see one time. These players have the fortunate situation for us as well as for them that they get to play multiple matches. They were not eliminated in their first games. They made it through to this point. Well, deservedly so. Colorful, Sock, both spawning in colorful in the upper right. Sock at the bottom left. We're going to see a little bit of an unorthodox Ancient of War positioning for Colorful, but that only suggests one thing and one thing only. Probably a macro game here in Game 1. Colorful here going with the Demon Hunter first does not surprise me. He's a big fan of the hero. Goes for both him and Kaho. Both very mechanics-based Night Elf players, both from China. Lots of similarities between them. Of course, Colorful's been around for much longer, has had a bit less success than his countrymen recently. Always find that quite interesting how there are lots of top night elves who are outstanding players in the scene, many of them with big success, but they have such differing playstyles. There's like the creative bunch, and then there's the... <laughs> Say the, it. Said, yeah. said the stupid bunch, but <laughs> <laughs> no. The, uh, the more... What's the right word? The more conservative bunch, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting to think of Colorful as being almost an old school player these days. Like, I remember when he first started playing. I think I even remember his first tournament, and I haven't been around that long. But at the stage, it feels like he's been competing for, what, at least 10 years? Maybe slightly longer than that? Um, so he, he's been around a long, long time. And Sock as well, too, but under different names for a little bit of that time. I forget exactly what it was. Email fans, right? That was Sock's original name. Oh, yeah, true. Long time ago. Was that even... Did you already play on Sotek Cup days? Yes. I remember that um, Chimiko played back then as a newcomer. And uh, Ricky, aka Bidu, never tired of saying how crappy he was back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Che Young the days. They were both not great. Sock used to actually stream back in those days. And you could always see the potential in his mechanics, but obviously neither player ever really had any big standout performances, but then they both eventually got amazing, and Sock continues to be amazing, and the Demon Hunter continues to do the same, harassing peasants, not running back, and the defense is pretty easy so far because it was no immolation, just mana burn. It is immolation, but actually doesn't want to commit in just yet. Sock always has outstanding footmen scouting. That also was the case here. He saw everything up in the north, and this almost looks like a risky expansion by the Night Elf, right? The Expo is coming up. As you like to point out, normally when you have Expo strats, you want to make sure it's reliable mm -hmm. and not just a big gamble that can cost you the game. Normally, it's the Keeper that you want to choose as a strong early game hero to secure your expansions. So, Colorful here is going to be uh, tested to make this work also with the Demon. Hasn't bought the staff yet. It is available. Bought another circlet and boots of speed. This is a pretty much surrounded demon. Or wait, okay, oh, you can't staff out here. Colorful. Too late. What? Oh, what? Was he too broke? Couldn't he afford the staff earlier? Yeah, you might be right on that. He has very little gold right now, but he could have sold something. Ah, uh, yikes. You know, Colorful is a very good player, but he needs to work on his micro-macro uh, resource management, creep routes, and definitely staff timings. <laughs> Expos should still come up, though. I mean, this was a bit of a, a bit of a wobbly one. But the Wisps are here. They're in the perfect position. Something that I keep a close eye on. Um, Archers now will fall as well. This is big experience for the AM. Well, not that big, actually. The Demon was denied. That was a big deal, actually. Otherwise, it yep. would have been AM3 and game over, probably. Okay, but the delay on the gold mine could be potentially setting Sock up in the future. He's taking a lot of damage from these trees, but he's do trying to do as much as he can. There's often times when you can get a hero kill, and then you try to get things done, but you just end up running around the map a little bit while the hero is dead, and you don't really gain much, especially when it's denied, as you point out correctly. So Sock trying to get some damage done, gets a couple of archers, drains some moon wells. But he does lose a footman and a lot of health in doing so. And the gold mine was not delayed at all because the demon hunter is already back. Okay, but uh, still, advantage sock, absolutely. But he's losing a couple more footmen. Yeah, I feel like considering he lost the first hero in the first few moments of the game, it's not even that terrible of a situation. No. Maybe. I mean, it's a playable spot for him. Certainly he is behind. Losing the archer's limits is creeping now. The demon hunter is far behind in experience. And also the tech was slowed down immensely. Normally it's the what the knife can rely on. They may have the later expansion, but usually they have the faster tech. 
This is not the case here. So it has the faster tech by a decent margin. And with that in mind, maybe the, the position is actually quite bad. Perhaps I have to take that back. Sometimes you just got to sit back and analyze it a little bit. And then it seems and then all the, you know, it's like when you're trying to sleep at night and all your fears and worries come back slowly but surely. You just need to take a little bit of time, Remo Demo. But uh, yeah, I think it's still absolutely playable, as you mentioned. The expansion is up, but there's going to be some difficulties, not now, but in the future for Colorful. Yeah, normally it's the bears, really, that uh, bounce you back into a solid state in the game. Like a solid state drive, two terabyte! Um, <laughs> that was so random and stupid, I don't even know. I love it. Why. Yeah, um, anyways. I, what I was saying, uh, normally Demon You Hunter distracted and yourself. <laughs> the first couple of <laughs> moments of early on tier two is when the Night Elf can uh, take some initiative on the map, maybe take some big camps, take that yeah. ever so crisp and juicy map control. But of course, as we know, once a couple of rifles come out, the big caster army is rolling, the big death ball, as they call it. That's when you need bears. Bears will be necessary. That's the big concern here. Bears are so, so far off, man. Okay, Archmage got level 3, went into the base of Samaratha, triple detonate to deal with the first level 2 water elemental. The Colorful's Lumber is absolutely fine. Zoom Macron Wisp was expansion. He's going to have enough Lumber for all the way to tier 3, despite the tech being slightly delayed. He should be absolutely fine there. Another Wisp going to go down, actually transferred into the gold mine there. The Demon Hunter comes back. Still no level 3 on this Demon Hunter, by the way, Rima Demo. That is difficult to say the least. He's going to be able to get it before there's any sort of second hero action going on for Sock, but still not the easiest of situations as the harass continues and as the tech now finishes for Sock. Yeah, Sock's getting off a wonderful scout here. AM was looking for lures, looking for cancels. Lore timings, as we know, are a really big deal in this matchup. And he saw the tech being so late, so Sock is much, very much aware that he's got a big tech lead here, especially considering what normally the state of things would be. So he's got the Blood Mage already coming. We got the double Sanctum on the way. No double barracks, which sometimes is favored by some humans, but also upgrades rolling in. The human economy is churning out and looking really good. Yeah, Sock, if he has a easy enough early tier two here, like say when the second hero comes out for Colorful, I feel like he's going to have not too difficult of a time in this game. His macro is super clean, his sanctums are being power built. I'm a big fan of no second barracks, actually. Personally, I think more casters, less riflemen is always good. The lores, he can see the timing. I think all Sock has to really do is macro up a big army, get a couple of heal scrolls, get level 2 blood mage, and go, go, go. Colorful is very experienced in holding this sort of a push, but I feel like the early game has just been maybe too good for Sock. We will see, though. He needs to buy some time for himself, Colorful. Yeah, I wouldn't mind if he was uh, to go for an early fight here. Get level 3 on the demon and then look for pickoffs, the Naga, with a couple of Dryads and the Archer range damage. That's when the Nihilov can still uh, look to get some shots in against the human before the big Death Ball army is ready. It's a lot... Uh a lot of this game will come down to numbers. It's a numbers game for the human, if you will. So you need a certain amount of them. 60 to 65 to 70 is normally the sweet spot. Before that is when Colorful could perhaps still go for a strong engage. As he finally gets level 3 in the middle. Gets the item. Oh, think of the Archmanger. Look at that. Plus 8 all stats on the demon. That's really good. Downside is, doesn't have much else at the moment. Sock already being aggressive with the first few riflemen. This is a very potent army for what it is. Keep checking the shop. The creeping was excellent for Colorful right out of the tavern for that Naga. Got both the marketplace for heal wards and got the Ring of the Dark Magi you just mentioned. But now being pressured, and he's the one that needs to be pressuring, he's not getting any kills. Not even able to clean up any of the footmen. Militia already be call being called over. 63 supply for Sock. This is an early time if I've ever seen one, but it might just work. Especially if he gets the heal scroll here, which he did receive from the shop, then this is going to be a tough one to hold. The heal ward is magnificent to have right now. But the bears, I mentioned them earlier. They are so crucial. They are necessary to hold a push like this. AM though, out of position. Oh, this could be a gift given to Colorful. Oh if we can force the TP here. Might even be right to let him die. Difficult spot. Is he going to be forced to make a choice? No, AM gets away and survives just barely. 
This is crazy. I don't think I've ever seen a position where a human's in the Night Elf's base at 10 minutes with nearly 70 supply and towers going up already. This is so early. Colorful, obviously not prepared. Look how many bears he has queued up right now. He's panicking, Rebo Demo, and he's about to be supply blocked and his shop's about to go down. Is there any real way to hold this? Hero Focus was the right option, but it just barely didn't pay off. Yeah, the tech delay, we can see it here very clearly manifested. <laughs> Three bears in queue, the master training as well. If he had had two more minutes, all these bears were out, then this could be, I guess this even should be, an easy hold. But time is perhaps the most important resource of this game. Demon are getting drained over and over, everything's hurt, and Sark's just buying time for the towers. Once they're up, this is going to be impenetrable. And, it, you know, this would almost be a situation where you could maybe, I know you'd probably still lose if you're colorful, maybe give up the expansion and try to play at one base first two, but unfortunately, everything was at this expansion. The shop, both lores, three moon wells. If you lose all this, you're pretty much screwed. You're not going to be able to macro out of this. And the army just simply isn't good enough. This is 71 versus 47 supply, maybe a hero focus. But even then, it's 47 out of 40 at that. Yeah, I think this should lead to a pretty quick GG here before too long. Colorful is trying to go for the Hail Mary, take out the AM. And I think even two or three hero kills won't save him now anymore. Because his expansion, which is his lifeline, is dropping very low. The towers are doing their work, which is dirty from the perspective of the, of the Night Elves. And this is going to be a pretty uncomplicated game. Not much here to analyze. Colorful lost his hero, fell behind and never come back. Exactly. That was a great start into the series for Sock. Got a little gift in the early stages. Took it and never let go, really. I mean, no lores for such a long time. No levels for such a long time. And Sock is 7-0 and in the War 3 Champions Finals. Yeah, that uh, pretty clean from Sock, all things considered. No real mistakes. Colorful with a very, very big mistake, obviously. And almost got that gift Rima Dima mentioned of folks in the Archmage, maybe forcing the TP. Um, but yeah, not the most difficult of games. Worth noting, Colorful ended that game, unfortunately for him, with 2,400 gold in the bank. You just imagine Ooh. if he had a little bit of extra time, what kind of game we could have seen there. But uh, maybe Turtle Rock will have the macro game we want in store. But Did maybe I... not. Did I mention that Colorful has to work on his resource management? <laughs> he had six bears that were almost produced that game. <laughs> almost produced. Well, uh, it almost saved him the game there. Uh, Chad was discussing if maybe going heavy on archers at that point would have been a uh, saving move or at least gave him more stability. But Colorful isn't really like that. He has a game plan. And he's going for it. No matter what, he needs the demon and he needs the bears, and that's all he got in front of his eyes. Yeah, I think yeah. a player like Moon would have maybe gone more Dryad heavy at least. Maybe not Archer heavy, but probably would have stayed tier 2 with that early of an expansion. You think that's maybe accurate, Rima Dima? Yeah, I think certainly Moon would have adjusted better. I don't know how he would have done it. Zeppelin drops, uh, disruptive play, hit and run, that's also something Moon is known for. Point, most important point though is uh, Moon is good at adjusting on the fly. When things mm -hmm. turn... Uh, against him. When he's behind, Moon is really good at recovering. Colorful is not a good improviser. Never has, and I'm afraid to say, may never be. Um, he wants to play what he knows. He's going to stick with uh, what he's familiar with. And if things uh, turn in a different direction, if things get weird, that's always when Colorful has been struggling. All right. Uh, we have a little bit of a situation. Sock is having some lag in the lobby so his chat is delayed incredible i have not experienced that before but should be fine he's ready now he's raised up all good and we're ready to go will he go eight and oh here on turtle rock that would be the confidence that he needs going into the grand finals but colorful I mean, he made a huge mistake that I'm sure he won't make. That was just such a silly thing at the shop that happened. Like, really, it really should never happen. So uh, I doubt Sock will get a gift like that two times in a row. Kind yeah, of that was, like, really weird. Um, seemed like he wasn't looking at his resources 
perfectly there because you could clearly see he was trying to buy time for the expansion, trying to soak up all the damage he could and uh, then staff out. But he didn't have enough cash, I suppose, for the staff quickly enough. Uh, it was indeed silly. The deny was a nice little touch towards the end, which did end up mattering, but still, of course, that... Just yeah, I think if he doesn't deny, the game is just over right there, because then level 3 Archmage after, I think, one Archer kill, probably, and then he, you know, he just continues pressuring, probably wins, just like that. Yeah, I think Colorful should just uh, put this to the side. He knows he can play better. Um, just getting warmed up a little bit, I guess, and now on his maps, start the big comeback. I am struggling to find the game. Do we have a number behind? Nope. Got nope. it. Nope. Same one. Yep, 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 yep. Got it, got it, got it. It didn't work for a bit. Now it does. It took a while for me as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, first map that Sock wins in six months against Colorful, and he is looking scary, I gotta say. Waiting for Sock now. Still experiencing some technical difficulties, I guess. But yeah, whole different game than in their last encounters. Whole different confidence. Uh, but the next map will show us if this was, uh, this going to be the case without that big gift. Yeah, we could talk about yeah, definitely the mistakes of Colorful all day, but, uh, I mean, Sock takes full advantage of them. Doesn't really screw up too much, I would say. I'd say through and through. We talk about how perfect he played versus Labyrinth. I think that was pretty close to a perfect game. Such an early timing, clean macro, a 10-minute push towards the expansion. Even if Colorful had really been playing... A quicker tack that still would have been a potent timing. Um, so Sock playing very, very well despite the mistakes on the other end. And we'll see if Colorful can clean it up. We're going to be in for a really good map too, I'm sure. The most beautiful sound in the world is a starting Warcraft game and a wonderful sight as well as Lord Helmy subbing for 103 months. That is closing in on the nine years, my dude. Is Sock smoking Colorful? I hope there's something else in his vape, but you never know. What I know is that I throw you wonderful people into the game. Turtle Rock will be our second map, which should make for a very, very different game. Indeed. This is Colorful's map pick, and uh, as even the newest additions to viewership and player base should know turtle rock is very bad for fast expansion doesn't matter which race you are but of course especially humans normally love to fast expand turtle rock is the one map where it's too tough to do uh, which forces the human into a one base play normally so colorful is ready to receive that must feel that he's got the answers ready yeah is this the worst map ever for fast expanding or is ancient isles gonna take that or is there some map i don't remember that's worse for fast expansions this might be oh, the worst i forgot about ai fast expo yeah that was poison, poison creep, creep. Yeah. <laughs> uh kind of close might to the opponent's worse. race as well yeah i had a lot of fun creep jacks back there in w3 arena days do you remember <laughs> that game against cash on that map I don't remember what I don't know what you're talking about. I feel like yes, that's a figment of your imagination. Speaking of W3 Arena, though, what was the map pool back then? It was definitely AI and AZ. I played those maps until my eyes were bleeding. No matter. Total Rock as well. I... There goes the demo man. Oh, he had not. these issues yesterday. Is Dude, he back? What is going on with my damn internet? Hello. Hello. Hey. Hi. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, then it was gone for a second. Uh, thank yeah, you we saw that. for the reconnect feature. Um, yeah, this weekend is cursed, man. Don't know what it is. Sock seems to have the same issues as you have. Are you in the same? Oh, you guys are actually in the game. Oh, I'm not in the game. <laughs> uh, you're not in the game. <laughs> Look, the good thing is we're rehosting. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'm still on the loading screen. <laughs> What the hell? Okay. Yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, you guys seem to be, I hear a lot of clicking. <laughs> so what is that clicking? Yeah, okay, I'm restarting. Yeah, I gotta say, World 3 Champions is quite laggy for me today. Also, I have high ping to every server. Well, then it must be the servers. Very weird. <laughs> you did you start, did, 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 did you try restarting your router? Can you turn, turn it, it on and off, and off again? 
You should be a. I mean, you got the the proper gear to be a, a tech support person there, Neil. You could do that. Me? You'd be the nicest. You'd be the nicest sounding tech support of all time. Yeah, you got you got a nice microphone. Ah, yeah. You could that, share a screen with them. Yeah, I, I I would love that. That is my dream job. That's not to do That's this. That's really what you're working towards. <laughs> I want to be a coworker of AKM though. Then it's really great. Ah, that'd be I excellent. guess you were kind of customer support in the cinema days, right? I was indeed, and I oh did that I was enjoy so much that? Fun, wasn't it? Mm, it was <laughs> so good. Yeah, people are so intelligent. Ask these intelligent questions. <laughs> Oh, Toxie mentioning the map with the three spawning positions. True. Nomad, Nomad. Isles, bro. Carson said that before. Well, ah, Rimodim was disconnecting, though, I think. Ah, yeah. true. Yes, yes. But yes, thank you, for, thank you for the credit. Give it, I think give that may have been also Nullwood in 1v1 for a while. Dark oh, days, dude. Maybe. Dark days. Yeah. Dark days was, yeah, dark and, dark and night. Night and dark. What was that map? <laughs> There was, there was aye, some aye, bad maps aye, back there. Aye, aye, dark. Aye. Bright That was and Nettie's, dark. though. Bro, Nettie's map creations, I mean, they do deserve some kind of an award. I don't know which one exactly, <laughs> but uh, wasn't it was it, something bright and dark. I think it wasn't on the ladder, though, right? Wasn't it just WCA? It might be correct, yeah. Ah, I don't true. know Wait. if it was on the ladder. WCA, what, was, was that before Nettie's? W3 Arena was before Nettie's, yes. No, no, I mean uh, WCA. Ooh, 2015 or I think 24, was 2014 was without Netties and 2015 was the first time with Netties. Dude, WCA 2014. So many funny things, so many mm -hmm. weird things. Dude, <laughs> back then, we still all thought that Under was unplayable. And we saw this guy, 120, back then called Terra yeah. and WFZ. And they were playing pretty well. WFZ won a map against TH, imagine. And then, of course, still got slaughtered. That was, that was such a different time back then, man. A player's forces are under attack. All right. I think we're ready now. We've delayed enough time ourselves to make it into game number two on Turtle Rock, everybody. We got are Colorful, we got Sock. Oh, are you not in? No, I am. I'm in. <laughs> okay. He's the host, like... dude. What the hell? <laughs> we're, we're all in. Yeah. All right. Oh, good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> We've made it. Professional made broadcasting it well. team. <laughs> we all need to share screens and we'd never have any questions ever again. <laughs> all right. So what, what is this going to be? Sock, is he going to try the Yumiko style expansion or is he going to go rather with the less risky approach of one base play? One base, which should lead to rifles, which should lead to a push, including a blood mage. Like I said, I thought I've seen tons of games with this before, um, which is pretty much basically always a human all-in strategy. You get the rifles, you get the blood mage creep, and the turning point seems to be level 3 blood mage and the human making it into upkeep. Then of yeah. course you need some scrolls and stuff to go uh, for the actual push, but that has looked so, so strong when uh, executed by the right hands. Very interesting here from Sock. I haven't seen this before. Maybe you have. He used the same militia for the green camp that he got level two at the orange camp with. Very, very efficient level two route from Sock. Um, just used them for like, I think, four or five attacks on one of the ogres and then ran them back. So that's going to mean he has the quickest tech possible because he used a little, a very little amount of militia. So there is the tech. There is the one base. And uh, so I'm going to continue creeping, continue getting items at least in the Archmage for now. And these early game items can make quite the difference if you get lucky enough to have three or four sl good slash perfect ones that can really amp up your hero's uh, potency early game and mid game and for the entirety of the game. So far, AM items. <laughs> Not the best. Ring's good for him of superiority. The Ring of uh, Protection, I would say, is actually pretty good for the Blood Mage. Blood Mage mm -hmm. tends to get focused a lot later on. Demon Hunter also with the Mantle here. Not that good for him, though for the Naga it will be, which will be expected later on. Boots for both players and dust found for the Archmage who's running around. The footmen are trying to find an angle on something else, scouting for maybe just a potential tree of life that obviously does not exist. He probably knows that, but always good to clear for anything a little bit unorthodox. Wisps are also scouting Please for something for crazy as back. well towards the red camp of Sock. Archmage would love to find level 3, but it's not going to be likely. For the same reasons that it's hard to get an expansion up on this map, 
It can be difficult to get level three as well without a heavy investment into militia or a second ancient war or something of that regard. Archmage getting very ambitious, at least gets the wisp, but uh, we'll now have to run away from the creeps and the demon hunter. Yeah, Turtle Rock kind of classically has always been a difficult map to get level three on, especially if you're getting pressured. We see that here. AM running around, looking for wisps and not committing too hard. I think mainly he's trying to slow down the demon hunter's progress. AM would, I suppose, love to level up as well, but if you can trade levels, meaning oh, you give archers. up uh, on them for yourself oh. and the demon as well. Oh, looking for the surround. Out of the shadows. Not quite getting it. But yeah, point being, uh, if you can. Sacrifice your own levels to also minimize the demon's levels. That's only a trade you take. Yeah, absolutely. Keeping the mana burn as low level as possible. I thought those archers would maybe hide and a staff of teleportation could be bought. And then the red camp could have been crept there, potentially by Colorful. But it didn't go for that play. Instead, just opted to put a little bit more damage on the Archmage. Defend Footman were creeping at the same time. And Defend Footman could also probably creep this red camp if Sok wanted to be super ambitious. Ancient War pivoted over, so both players may be going to be securing... At least a bit more experience, if not a couple more levels soon at the early tier 2 stage of the game. Wisp is found at the red, so that's two Wisp kills for Sock now, but no creeping uh, is going to be done at that red, at least for now. Quite the quick tier 3 for Colorful here, by the way. I like the base layout as well. We have a little Moonwell wall in front, and then there will be a place for the lowers behind. Quick bears will be essential. And quickly he should get him. Um, yeah, normally, when we see the Night Elf uh, bracing for impact, bracing for the attack of the Night Elf, eh, for the human, excuse me, they go bears as quickly as they can, which means no dryads. They skip dryads, they skip this spell at least for a long time to get those bears out as quick as they can, and that again will give a lot of uh, value to this AM and the Watcher Limits. Yeah, and a lot of freedom as well with no dryads for the human player. If you get creep jacked by a single dryad, even if the demon hunter is pressuring you, you can lose those first initial riflemen and those first initial priests. So it gives a lot more space to the human player. It's a necessary sacrifice, of course, for the night elf. But, uh, for now, Sokka's going to get level 3 Archmage. He's going to ideally get level 2 Blood Mage. You want just not the Siphon, but also the Banish to deal with the demon hunter. You kind of need the combination if you do play Blood Mage, which is a little bit different from the Naga. You can keep the Naga on level one and still do the push. You can you know, keep different heroes on level one and still do the push. The Blood Mage, I'd say it's necessary to get the level two, which is what Sock goes for right now. Got really good items, by the way. You really want to tank up that Blood Mage. He's going to be standing there, siphoning while your army kites back. The Blood Mage normally, naturally, gets out of position just because of his spell kit. And so having something to tank him up like those items help a lot. Big healing potion here would be wonderful. Big mana, also pretty good. Even more mana translates into even more either Banish or Watch Element. And let's remember, there's no Dryads. Not for a long time. Back of the turtle being crept. Red camp now being crept. The Demon Hunter finds level 3. Colorful. He's going to get a higher level Naga than he did last game before the push comes in. But here are the Militia. But Militia don't go towards the base of the Night Elf, but rather another consumable camp. This is going to be Blood Mage level 3 before what we assume is going to be a timing. But that timing is running out. The Master Training is going to be done in about 40 more seconds. Next item for the Naga is the Lion Horn, always a good item, and she's giga stacked by the way. Double claws, I mean, uh, big claws, and the mantle, resulting in plus 11 damage. There's going to be also Roar, one should assume, and of course the Orb of Venom, normally put on the Naga, because the demon's going to have to spend a lot of time running around and also being banished. Especially now that there's so much mana on this Blood Mage. He made it to three, he's got the Siphon to lots of elementals, but an early engage here by the Night Elf Forces. And an expansion for Sock as well. No push, no timing. Just a good old-fashioned tier 2 rifle expand. This is classic play from Sock. And he's going getting a lot of creeps done on the back of the turtle as well. So he's maybe feeling comfortable with his hero levels that he's going to be able to fight for now, going to be able to get that second base up. But it's not a level 3. It's very, very potent with the items you mentioned as well. So the trade should be favoring Colorful for the time being. Yeah, army size is still pretty small at the moment, 44 supply, not that big of a force really. The heroes here carry, carry most of the weight, by far. Demon Hunter is still active, but there's no Orb of Venom yet. The damage is lacking in the Night Elf army. I think I would like to see a bit more Banish here, maybe? Sok is struggling a little bit with the kiting right now. 
Yeah, lost three footmen there. Didn't get any kills himself, but that's what footmen are for at this stage. Going to be replaced by some riflemen, of course, and some casters, but still. A loss is a loss. Experience is experience. This gargantuan could go to either player. The oh. banish, but the fork lightning doesn't do it. Maybe the sort could clean it up, and it does. I do believe that experience went to sock, as well as the item. Let's grow the beast he has, but not many units to put it on. Only two rifles are left here. The rest is casters, which are pretty frail. Another one died right there. We got the banish siphon combo once more, but it might not be lasting forever. Still, big consumables though on the blood mage siphon. I mean, the one of mana seal and the scroll of the beast. Demon hunter. He's got the invul. Is he willing to commit it here? Not yet. When you're banished, you also get healed for more from the priest, which is a nice interaction. Demon are chasing, the human heroes chasing, but the army is looking small right now. Yeah, one rifleman did die, one star potentially going to die here too. The demon hunter finds a couple of kills there, or at least one. The bear found the rifleman kill by the green camp earlier. Yeah, Sakri, that's uh, attacking with pretty much nothing right now. One rifleman and a water elemental. Yeah, reinforcements from the main here are very important. Clean macro now is of crucial importance. Sock must make sure these buildings are busy, actively producing. But the Arcane Tower is a good defensive hold at the expansion. And Colorful knows that time is ticking against him. Yeah, there's a second Sanctum. Sock's definitely going to be able to start macroing up. Should probably try to break up keep as soon as he can. As soon as the lumber, I suppose, allows him to. But the expansion being pressured, this timing, pretty nice from Colorful. He's out of mana, and the bears aren't as healthy as they would like to be, but maybe he can do some damage. Tower is gone, the peasants are exposed, but the Knight of Fear finds himself in a pretty weird position. Slow still really strong, Watch Lament still really strong, but we do have the first riot out. The first two. Oh, but there might not be abolish? Oh, the first riot goes down without dispelling anything. And the hero's still out of mana. The Naga, really the carry of this army when it comes to finding unit pickoffs. You need that Fork Lightning, you need that Cold Arrow. Staff Teleportation, Demon Hunter goes back in to try to at least force a reaction. Gonna go for more Peasants. If you can kill Peasants, you might as well have killed the expansion. If you could do it over and over again, the human player is gonna regret ever having that. The Naga needs to be careful though. Oh, the Demon Hunter's not here. You can't save this Naga at all right now. This might be a surrounded Naga. Oh, and, and surrounded bear. she is. Might be a double surround. Staff in from the demon. Is there a way to save her? There's the invul. There's the TP. And that was a very nice save indeed. Bear also... Never mind. Does not make it out. That's another big kill. And that is Sock taking a clear lead. There's a decent amount of Moonwells for Colorful. No Wellspring yet, though. And he has forgotten. He could still upgrade it and get value out of it during this night time. But it's always nice to have it right away for this night specifically. Naka finally has more moon juice. A very high level hero game here no this orb. early on. You'd... Still has no orb. orb. This whole oh. time. It's so much damage he's missing out on. 60 supply versus 53. Still definitely going to be totally fine for Colorful because he has the tech advantage. Sock would love a couple more units out of those double sanctums, but he doesn't have the farms currently kiting away. When will he use that scroll to beast, I wonder? He could turn and use it right now, but it seems like he doesn't want to. Waiting for the militia to arrive. They're going to be a good help as well, even if it's not that many. It's more frontline and also a bit more damage. Tower at the expansion might get cancelled, though the peasants are quick with the repair. Very quick. And now with the help of the militia, the tide might turn. Demon Hunter, out of mana already. There's the scroll of the beast. That's a lot of damage raining in additionally. Well, Mage with a low position, but that's what those items were for. Potion of Vulnerability, that's what also that one is for. The bears are finding some connections, but mostly on Militia right now. The Arcane Tower gets up and is burning one of the bears that actually had a rejuve available, siphoning away another one who drives in a bear reinforce. These are very, very useful reinforcements for Colorful. He's finding a couple of kills, but Demon Hunter is going to be consistently banished, and now the Nog is out of mana as well. Yeah, this is a big problem for the Knights to deal with the mass banish. You want to have drives for the dispel, but... The amount you have from Abolish is actually very low. They run out of mana quick. You can see it right here. Demon Hunter is trying to do his best in the back line. Did finally get the orb, by the way. Seems like I may have missed that earlier. Uh, but when you're banished, that one also doesn't do too much for you. Yeah, I should maybe pass it over to the Naga now. Obviously, he would want a second one in the future, but there might be no future in this game for Colorful if he doesn't break this expansion. Still 60 against 50. Still a playable supply number as one more bear potentially going to fall towards the north. One rifle and a Sork catching that one. We'll get a kill. A breaker does fall, but still Sock continues to hold the expansion, and that's really what's going to win him this game in the long run. If Colorful cannot break this expo, cannot get a counter expansion up, it's not going to be able to win.
He's close to having the resources for the counter expansion, but maybe he feels it's too late. And I guess you might be right in that assessment. Expansion for the Night of takes a total of three minutes, with the tree being two and the Entangled being one. By that time, Sok would have grown increasingly ridiculously rich. Already up at 60 supply, creeping up the red camp now. Blood Mage gonna get level four here. AM closer to five. And this human army is looking difficult, difficult to deal with. Do you banish level two here, or do you start to invest in the flame strike? Probably just banish level two and just spam that. You can start using it on bears and stuff like that, I would imagine. I always forget how banish scales. I think it's... Less cheap, mana right? and longer, right? I think it's duration and mana cost, I believe. So then you can definitely start using it on bears. And also it's better on the Demon Hunter if there isn't that amount of abolish we're talking about. Naka's almost level five, actually, for colorful. That could be a massive carry. Demon Hunter. To staff out, taking a little bit of damage, but the distraction I think is what Colorful wanted there to try to get this Naga level five. Yeah, I always used to think that Banish scales badly, but it goes down by 15 mana and it's one more second duration on heroes. Yeah, it's not that's the most insane good. scale, but it's, it's pretty good, I would say. Yeah, better than Flame Strike level one because you just don't simply have the mana. Like, because I like it when people start banishing like three, four bears at the same time if you have the mana pool available so if you can do that oh this creep jack is nasty the incense is making it so difficult to run away now that the match has so much mana demon are normally the hero known for messing with the opponent's mana pool blood mage says i am the anti-caster baby make room for the one true king again again going into sock now gets claws plus eight gets the experience colorful wisely just counter-attacking wants to force the town portal the Archmage is going to be here with level 5 now as well. Does go for Aura level 3. I really like how Sok was distributing his items, by the way. I think he made all the right choices. Didn't sell the ring, didn't sell the parry up. Those are good Blood Mage items. Puts the right click on the AM. Maximizing, min-maxing, uh, I mean, every single detail here between the items. Total Rock, always a map known for having the potential to get lots of great items and get them. He did. Colorful seems to be... Not having too many, actually. I wonder if he sold some. He does have some really good heroes now. Naga level 5 is great. But the supply lead here is perhaps a bit too much. That was beautiful from Sok there. He tried to... He threatened the surround on the Naga and slowed the bear and split off his forces to kill the bear so it couldn't be staffed out because the Naga, if it ran back, was going to be surrounded by the army. Really nicely finding that bear kill there, Sok. And now he's 20 supply. Well, 19 technically ahead. And he's probably going to be getting the 2-0 here. It's looking likely if Colorful can't do something right now. Yeah, Stark is ready to bring down the axe. He was playing a pretty defensive game for a long time. With the expansion, he wanted to have time on his side. And now, the time is up. Here's the push. Big death ball. It still is. And uh, what, oh, what do you do against that? I don't mind this from Colorful pressuring the expansion as much as he can and then he'll staff back he's just delaying buying time he can't fight right now anyway he's also building dryads because they produce quicker he's going to be able to get some sort of a force to hold he's killing as many peasants as he can he'll go back and then he'll try his best at least to do one final hold here Positioning's good though not too bad the bears in the back and the demon hunter in the back the wisps also this might be a winnable fight for colorful now Good engagement so far. Numbers, of course, still speaking in favor of the human. Mass with detonates, but the Blood Mage doesn't care, man. He's got so much mana, so much in the tank. He is tanking as well in the front line. Good Fog Lightning, though, gets a kill. The Naga, she also has a bit of, of juice still. Blood Mage in trouble now. The hero positioning by Sok has been a little bit awkward at times in this series. AM now finds himself in front, has a TP out. The Demon gets level 5, and we ain't done Blood yet. Mage. The Blood Mage dies. Oh my god, huge mistake. Sock here played such a great game, messing up big time with the hero positioning. Yeah, these fights can be hard if you have Dryad slowing everything. If the bears get on top, you suddenly take so much damage and colorful with a really nice fight there. The positioning was great. The delaying and consolidating was great as well. And he holds still 62 against 48, but definitely a great position for the Night Elf now um, compared to at least where he was just 30 seconds ago. Naga there was able to find a bunch of kills with a fork lightning. Blood Mage even died without that lightning spell. She is pretty close to level 6. I wonder if the tornado could do something here. In theory, you can use that against Siphon. But that is uh, quite theoretical indeed. Last try. 
Last chance for Colorful Supply Block. He's 20 supply behind, but he's got strong heroes. Mage again taking some damage, but uh, the militia now is going to be called. A couple of breakers getting low. One bear split off to try to kill some peasants in the meantime. Banish is being used defensive, not offensively, but I think it needs to be stamped on that Demon Hunter fork fight, and he finds a kill. A couple of breakers die in the front, but a couple of bears also traded out down to pretty much just a ranged army, and there is the rifle count for Sock to continue killing these. Level 5 now on the Blood Mage. Pretty good upgrade there. This Siphon is not messing around any longer. And the Banish is doing a terrific job against the Demon who was disabled for most of this fight. I hope at least he got a special parking spot for it. Naga, she's almost level 6. Can that save him? Doubtful. Demon level 6 is the only trump card left that you can hope for. The bear also falls to the expansion. Actually only got about one peasant kill. Despite being there the entire fight. Demon Hunter taking a lot of damage. And there's not a ton of moon juice. Not a ton of moon wells even. Left over for Colorful. Who's now at 37 supplies. Sock seems to have done it. It was a little spooky there for a second. He was a couple of unit losses more from losing this game honestly. Which is crazy to say because he's been ahead pretty much the entire time. Archmage, you could say he's thinking about retrain, but should probably just buy heal scrolls. Yeah, there's the heal scrolls indeed. And Sock going to go forward again. There's still a red camp available. Maybe that's something that Colorful wants to do just because he's got really nothing else to do currently. And now the mains have dried up. No more income from the primary bases. This is where Colorful will try to make use of his... Um, Racial uh, unique ability. Upgrade Nature's Blessing and then move over the tree. If you can establish one base, one base again, perhaps there is a way. But man, this Blood Mage 5 is just... <laughs> so good. It's so good. like two years at the same time. Look at the mana go. Demon Hunter went in for a mana burn and actually lost mana. Uh, compared to the Blood Mage losing mana. 60 left on him. Naga at least has a little bit of Fork Lightnings. The Fork Lightnings are the only real way you initially secure kills. Especially when the human army is out of position. If you can get a nice fork lightning, you can have a good start to the fight. Still, not impossible supply numbers with these hero levels for Colorful. But he is lacking that economy. He did research the Nature's Blessing you mentioned. And he will be merging the tree forward. But Sock probably just waiting for the perfect timing to attack. Once that gold mine is about to be giving gold again to Colorful. Sock will try to push. Look at that siphon, baby. Blood Mage, full mana. That is so much banish. Should be way more than the Dryads can keep up with. There's a bunch of Dryads out. <laughs> Look at the Blood Mage, he's just spamming it. Spam that, banish baby. And if the Demon is uh, in the Ethereal Realm, there's not too much dealing damage really outside of him. So far the death spells have been looking pretty good. You can see it, Colorful always dispelling quickly. The banish as much as he can. But, you know, Supply Elite is just too much to overcome now. Naga makes it to level six. Do we see a tornado maybe? No. One last fault lightning to get some more kills. Thirsting still for the level 6 demon, but even that now. It's not gonna yeah, he'd, it. ju he'd just be banished. Uh, unfortunately, if he got level 6, it would be nice to see. Maybe an anti magic potion would be worth the investment if he does get level 6, but I think it's too far away at this stage. Drives are trying to kite away. Moonwell's not entirely dry. He has one more shot at this with healthy heroes. The gold mine's gonna be entangled in about 30 seconds, but Sock. With the resources he still has, can go even above 60 supply, and currently he's 26 supply ahead. Does he want another heal scroll? Seems likely. And then maybe the final push, but Sock playing it patiently. Getting some more consumables. This might be the opportunity for Colorful to get a few more kills. Of course, we see that he's close, man. He's close to that level 6. Wants to get it. Out of health, out of mana yet again. Breaker, there's a nice find. A couple more kills. Naga comes back in, but pretty much just a really, really strong dryad at this stage. But more kills is probably will be level six, but the Demon Hunter doesn't have enough health to get there. Oh, gets one more kill. Can't quite make it. Falls apart at the finish line. And Sock goes up 2-0. And he is now 8-0 in this tournament. Despite this flaw in the engagement bottom left-hand side, I feel like Colorful was constantly looking for an expansion at the beginning of Tier 2. This is what happened recently a lot. Remo is absolutely not interested in what I'm saying, taking his headphones off. Unbelievable. The disrespect. God damn it. 
uh, was sharking around. Oh, the neighbors were going crazy. There's, there's something going on. Somebody might be getting lynched or something. I don't know aye, what it is. Aye, aye. Hopefully he, she, it deserves it. Uh, but yeah, Colorful was sharking around at the upper left-hand side's rat spot, looking for that expo, but Sock said, oh, I, I mean, I saw you scouting for this, I saw your wisp there, I'm not going there blindly to the rat spot, uh, I just go to my front yard on the back of the turtle expand there, and Colorful was a little bit too late to seriously threaten that, and once a human has an expansion, man, you know, it's over. Yeah, and he had such a level, uh, early level three blood mage that it was really, really easy to trade those couple of casters alongside having level two siphon straight away and consumables because I think he got two, maybe in, yeah, it was three gargantuans. He got the greater mana, the scroll of the beast, and then the wand of mana stealing. Um, sock. He was just too strong as soon as that expo got up for colorful to really punish that expansion, and that was the tale of that game. It just continued to snowball despite that one pretty bad fight. Um, everything being out of position. It was a great fight from Colorful, a terrible fight from Sock, and those two things almost gave Colorful a chance. But uh, yeah, the uh, the consumables, the expansion, the timing was just too strong. It was unorthodox from Sock, slightly compared to what we see on more standard maps, but uh, still very very strong play. Colorful needs to win three maps in a row against someone who hasn't dropped the map this entire tournament. How would you rate Colorful's mental, Remo? Is he capable of doing that? Uh, he's not really a good bounce back player, to be honest. Uh, if he's having a good tournament, he's having a solid run all the way through and doesn't get tested too much. So far, he's been getting uh, kind of manhandled, to be honest. Colorful, at the moment, is uh, going up against what looks like the better player currently. Sock having one hell of a tourney so far. He might be pulling off a happy right here. Make it to the grand final. Without dropping a single map. Twisted Meadows is next though. And everything can always happen on Twisted Meadows. Sock is ready. Colorful doesn't have a connection to the server just yet. But we'll get there. This could be fireworks, everybody. This could be tier 3 on the human side. This could be math expansions. Or this could be a similar playstyle than before. It is the most beautiful map, though. Colorful. Pull it together. Make it a series. You can do it. He indeed can. Fortunately, we might not see anything like a Warden on Twisted Meadows from Colorful. Probably going to continue with the Demon Hunter. I mean, if it, w it was potential for a Warden, I'd be talking about the spawns, maybe the Mercenary Camp, as opposed to the Shop Spawn for both players. Um, and Sock, because he's expecting a Demon Hunter, probably not likely to see a Mountain King. So it's not going to be a ton of variation here, but where it can vary is the early game, is, you know, maybe not one base play from Sock, maybe not Colorful losing his Demon Hunter right away. Maybe both players, in some miracle, get a clean expansion up on Tier 1 and go into the macro game on Twisted Meadows that we all want to see. We want to see more subs, and we do get more subs. Kazol38, thank you for the 28 month. I hope Happy will own these other OP races. Wink emoji. <laughs> Thank you, Gabo Gab, for the three-year resub. Ayo! Happy three-year subversary, my dude. And happy game three to you guys. Oh, Sock is so tired. Oi, oi, oi. Well, he might have a lot of time to wake up here. Our third map, Twisted Meadows, known for bringing us long epics, oftentimes. Especially in this matchup, really. We have lots of two base versus two base uh, matchups meta nowadays. This is the only one uh, where it used to be the case back in the olden day, back in the medieval times of Warcraft 3. This was the only matchup where for a long while two base versus two base would be played a lot. Made it very exciting, made it very diverse as well in many different regards. Can lead to long games and long games, big maps. You know what that tells me? That tells me tanks. Ooh, that'd be nice to see. We haven't got to see enough tanks recently. You see him more in Human vs. Undead these days, but I would love to see him in this matchup. Team Hunter versus Archmage. Three out of three games, as kind of expected. We probably could have predicted this going into the series. And a Mercenary Camp Creep for Colorful going to give him a big boost of experience. A nice consumable, which if it is an expansion, like we expect from Sock. This consumable can be a very big deal. Scroll the Beast can make a big difference. Greater Heal, Push and Vulnerability can make a big difference. 
The mercenaries will also help a ton. We'll see what Sock does initially. Will it be a three farm expansion? Or is he going to go towards the lab of the Merc camp right away? Yeah, the footy was moving out, not to the Merc camp, but he's going to go scouting, which means you can't decrypt the lab, right? You need to pull no. the lab if you want to have a chance of creeping that without any uh, oh huge tragedies coming your way. Or maybe you can. Oh, really? Whew, that looks so risky. How much damage is he going to take here? Yeah, I suppose he just doesn't care. The, the pull can be a little bit janky sometimes, but I mean... Yes, I guess it's no problem. Shadow Priest stolen. Couple Shadow Priest across the map. Almost gets the last hit. Oh, the demon just got it. Oh my god, that would have been... It's normally a game losing. Yeah. Steal. Or game winning in that case, I guess. You gotta think that Shadow Priest, if it gets the last hit on the golem, that's essentially as though there's a Tome of Experience still at the, la at the lab for Sock. Just like the olden days, you can get level 3 so quickly. And the pressure is extremely strong. Still, lab gets crept. Sobi Mask is pretty good, I want to say. Push and vulnerability, also pretty strong. But colorful. Look at level 2 here in a second. And he's going to be in the face of Sock for probably this, the remaining time in this early game. And he doesn't have any tank up items just yet. No rings, no slippers, no HP. So the demon could be pretty frail here once he comes into range. He's going to have the invuln, of course. But that one only lasts... 15 seconds. He's holding the skill points for now. Wants to assess what might be best. Yeah, Sock doing the same as it seems. Was getting ready to call Militia to go towards the expansion for a second there, but gave up his plans at least for a little bit. But the fourth farm has been built. The Militia are now being called seven of them. And Sock will go towards the left-hand side expansion. Dima Hunter perfectly positioned to intercept this though. He almost lost the trail. But since he's got a Wisp in the north, he should pretty much know what the deal is. And if Sock takes too much time here, the Nile forces will increase in strength. In fact, they already are. Berserker is now out. More archers might be coming. Although, I guess, not yet. Ancient of War is still going to be creeping up more, eating through the trees. Twisted Metal's classic. And also now a Shadow Priest. Colorful is looking quite good here, I would say. Yeah, credit to Sock. He tried to steal both the Berserker and the Priest, the second Priest, but he lost the, uh, the Fast Finger War there for both of those guys. So Colorful does have the stronger force, but Sock had the resources he's, and the supply. If he'd gotten both those mercenaries, he maybe could have been completely safe here, but it seems like he has uh, dived away from the Demon Hunter a little bit, and he's going to be able to get the expansion creep unharassed for the time being. Item for him, the Perry app, which is quite useless indeed. Maybe later for a second hero could be okay, but honestly not the best item, I think. But a good level up. Level 3 Archmage now, that's a lot of water elementals. Especially thanks to that wonderful Sobi Mask. Oh, committing in with a demon with the invul, and he's trying to get the cancel. Right click from the rest of the wow. army, this might be enough damage. But there's so many peasants here. Sock brought extra peasants because his expansion was delayed, but still he's got to get the cancel. That's so many resources invested. Really nice find there by Colorful. Very smart to go for the cancel. Did cost him a Shadow Priest. Might not be the end of the world. If you also lose the Berserker, that would be bad. But that one does get away. Importantly, Sock did cancel, so he has enough resources to set it, but set it up again. But indeed, that was a lot of gold and lumber. Going poof into thin air. Oh, staff teleportation, a big deal for the Colorful to buy it here. Buys both staff Buys and sells both. one. Cool. Because the footman was on the Tree of Life. That would have been a cancel by the Archmage. Very, very well done there from Colorful. Pretty sick scout also by Sock, right? This tree is uh, hard to find in a very safe position, but the footy still found it. Sock always impressive with this footman scouting. Yeah, he's always done that, really. He's been using that first footman so well for so many years. He's being annoying. I, I've seen him kill altars before with just his first initial scout footman. He uses it so well and keeps it alive for so long. This one will die, but the Demon Hunter is going to meet up with the Panda now and go towards the expansion. So we will have two base, two base. No cancel there found by Sock. We're going to have the macro game, albeit a little bit delayed on Sock's ends of, ends of thing. The cancel of the expansion was nice, but uh, everything comes at a price in this game. And uh, while he was canceling the expo, he wasn't creeping. I'm looking at the Demoner's experience bar, and I'm not impressed. 335, that is far away from being any kind of a threat. 
Yeah, the Archmage is almost level 4 as well, which is a huge upgrade. That aura is excellent, especially when you get level 2 water elementals. Takes you a while to get that sometimes, but that won't be the case in this game. And the pressure's going to continue. This panda might be underleveled for a while if he can't find some space soon. Not to mention, he doesn't have a lot of units to creep with either, currently colorful. Yeah, Dryads are needed pretty badly here to finally give some space to the Night Elf to have a strong weapon against this AM who has been looking damn solid so far, as the AM basically always does in the right hands. And yeah, the Lords weren't cancelled. Here's the first ride. Abolish on the way. Colorful should be about to stabilize here as we Players move towards the mid-game. A needs to. Needs to get this expo running ASAP. Walking Ancient of War into the creeps is oh. not very helpful, though. That's actually pretty bad, yeah, because he needs some ability to creep this panda up. He's been delayed so much by the Archmage, who buys a Mud Golem now. All right, Sock, I see you. Oh, that could be really good. There's only a limited dispel, very limited in the form of Abolish. Taking out the Mud Zerker. Golem must be a priority. Oh my god, that's so sick. Can he get the kill with the first slow? If he even gets just the Berserker, it's worth it. But the Abolish is there. Sock playing a really good game here once again. Next Watch Elemental ready in just a bit because of the Sobi Mask. Demon Hunter is slowed, Mud Golem working out well. Nice deny there as well. With two more Dryads on the way though, surely, surely Colorful must finally have stable position. Don't call me Shirley. Zeppelin comes in. Expansion. This is all time the expansion is being delayed right now. It has not started mining yet. And while Sox Tech was rather slow towards tier 2, he's going to be there now soon. Finally. And thanks to the Shredder, he's got all the lumber he's ever going to need. He can go tier 3, all the upgrades, all the buildings. And if you want to play tanks, you need yeah. lots of resources. Seems like Sock is on the right way. This is seeming like more and more of a likely game to see tanks. Obviously, it, he is playing tanks into a panda, but an underlevel panda. And just with the play of the, the Zeppelin, with the amount of delays on the expansion, um, with the Shredder now too, it just seems more and more likely like this is a heavy, heavy harass game. Zeppelin is going to go into the main base, but Colorful realizes immediately. Um, slow on some Wisps, maybe. <laughs> Be a bit weird, but it kills a kill. Brilliant Zora, baby. Unlimited mana, no problem. True. Though he hasn't made it to level 4 yet. He's been stuck on level 3 here for a while, but I think there he is good enough for the time being. Level 4 will be inevitably received. Alright, and we got tier 3, we got the MK. It's looking indeed a lot like tanks now. Colorful expansion, soon to be mining. Now, the priorities shift for Colorful. He should be more and more safe back at home. Soon, uh, he's gonna have to worry about creeping a lot. Oh, Shredder stolen! Love that by Sock. Colorful would love that for himself as well. Um, yeah, he must creep the panda and the demon and stop the third expansion. The third base, I mean. And that's what the demon is up to right now. Good play by Colorful. Yeah, very nicely done. Can the Archmage get back? Has a staff to maybe help out his army here. But he more so needs his units there to defend. Goldmine dropped. The Shredder's going to help out significantly here. I am surprised Sock didn't go for any Goldmine cancels at the expansion. I think that Zeppelin would have been better utilized to do that over and over again than to do, you know, sort of minimal damage here. The Shredder Steel, again, as you mentioned, really, really nice, but I think he could have delayed this expansion a ton more if he had prioritized that a little bit. By the way, I remember you saying some years ago a uh, quote that has stuck with me. Do you still feel strongly that everything from the lab is OP? Yes, definitely is. It just corrects <laughs> okay. mistakes that players make. <laughs> Every mistake you could make. Oh, we got an expansion up I didn't scout. Oh, two sappers. Oh, my lumber got messed up. Oh, get a shredder. Oh, I can't scout well enough. Let's just reveal six times because I have too much gold bank. You know, oh, my hero's about to die because he's out of position. Oh, Zeppelin. Yeah, the shredder is certainly doing great work, and so is the Zeppelin here for Sock dropping against the expansion. But yeah, I think you point out a good uh, fact here. Good little nugget. Um, the attack would have been cancelled earlier, but really it wasn't. So now Colorful is mining pretty freely, and it's going to have a strong economy to back him up. But what the Zeppelin play certainly did was keep Colorful busy, and he's still very much suffering from low levels. And the tanks are going to be on the way. And, you know, level 3 Panda is great and all against tanks, but really you want to start getting progress towards that level 5. You want to have a high level Panda. You want to really be power creeping it. This Panda should already be well on his way to level 4. If it was a clean creeping game, maybe would have even gotten there already. 
um, but he's not there yet. The first tanks are going to be greeting a panda with only level one breath of fire soon enough. We've got Ancients of War starting to come up in the main base for defensive purposes, so Colorful very much knows what's coming. It's not that hard to predict. We've seen similar games like this a lot in the past. This has been a very disruptive play, very harassy game. Uh, it's looking, it's smelling like tanks, and soon they will be here. But man, they take a long while. Maybe the production speed. Slow as hell. I can't believe the Demon Hunter is still only level 2, dude. You mentioned this super early on, maybe six minutes ago. The Demon Hunter was underleveled, and he's gotten not much more experience since then. Power creep and can start. This is going to be double level 3 from this shop creep. The scouting has been great from both players. The flying machine is going to constantly be tracking the Nidalef army. The Demon Hunter finding that third base is a massive deal for Colorful earlier. So both players definitely playing their strongest, I would say, so far in map 3. Yeah. Powerful here has been suffering in the early game. I would say in the mid game, he's been playing a good, attentive game. Uh, he's been minimizing the damage back at home. And exactly, the demon printing the third base was so, so important. Oftentimes, it looks like when the human plays this tank harass game, which is already difficult to deal with, once they get to three bases, it seems almost impossible to beat. So, this will have to remain a priority for Colorful. And he's scouting for that reason. He's got the Wisp at one gold mine, he's got a Hippogriff now. He's going to be consistently. Consistently looking for more bases. Pan almost has creeps. That would have sucked after we just praised both players. But uh, <laughs> he does live. Two tanks in a Zeppelin that was almost scattered by a Hippogriff. Maybe this is the time when Sokka's going to go for that third base if he can find a way to finish creeping. Town Portal immediately respecting this push is colorful, but I don't think Sokka's going to be actually taking this fight. There's two Zeps over there, by the way. There's the tanks coming, and there's also a few more units in the Hurt Zeppelin. So a two-prong attack by Sok right here. This is really tough to perfectly defend for the Night Elf. How is he going to react even. to both these threats? I don't, I don't think he can save the tree any longer. Okay, TP buys it immediately. Okay, he will be able to save the tree. It's going to be tough, or will he? Two tanks. It's a lot of damage. They have plus two, two attack upgraded. as well. Also the flute. So much damage on them has to uproot. Good call. Minimizes the damage from the tanks. And I think that should be enough just barely for the save. And Colorful defends both bases. Real nice. Sock is creeping a red at the same time. And yeah, a couple of the units went down. But as long as the tanks live, it should be okay. I'm going to save one with the TP. Uh, TP to save the tank and the Zep. Nice play, dude. Both are playing this really well now. Yeah. Outstanding display. Yeah, very, very impressed by both players so far this game. Mount King going to get level three. And some militia were called over. The third base may be going to be at the red camp. Maybe it's time for Colorful to start thinking about a third base as well. The resources are very high. Shredder goes down. Level four of the Demon Hunter. And we are getting closer and closer to the late game. Neither player made a big enough mistake to let this one slip so far. We might get the macro game we are hoping yeah. for. And you might see the first bigger mistake by Colorful in a while. If he doesn't spot the top right expansion, if these towers finish, most likely cannon towers, and the expansion here comes up, then the game will get very difficult. Colorful must find this space and stop it. One tank gonna go down. Never been a big fan of people just throwing tanks away for nothing. We prefer it to try to save itself, but will go down and immediately to the upper right goes Colorful. The scouting has been so good. A crucial moment again. Prevented the third base now for the second time. Earlier in the east, now in the west. No, it's the other way around. I have an east-west weakness. Me too. That is my flaw in life. Yeah, sometimes I avoid it. I'm trying to get better with it recently. Berserker, going to go down. The hero levels are really, really good. Well, for both players to be fair, but the 4-3-2 is going to be very, very much the dynamic duo over here. And a burn those, helping out quite a bit. Maybe a surround on the panda. Can he force the Metal Army out of here, Sock? Then he can get more towers up. He needs to hold Sock. Oh, Demon with the mana burn. Almost gets the kill. He's got the boots to chase. AM Almost has the holy TP. Light. TP! Almost. Oh okay. my lordy. He almost had the Holy Light. He had, was in range for the aura on top of the Paladin. And he was trying to hold on long enough for Holy Light. But there was almost one more auto attack. So now the expansion is stopped. Tank again in the main base, but two bears already there to defend. This is so much more easily said than done for both players. What Colorful's been doing in the defense of the harass and with the scouting is very, very difficult to do. Even gets another tank in the main base of Sock now with a bear that's split off. He's got bears all over the place. Reaggression here from the human forces. Demon Hunter, where's the mana burn? There it is. MK now dry, except for the big mana, which he's still holding on to. By the way, uh... And a little spell shield. Isn't that a dream to have against the Mountain King? 
oftentimes not the most useful item, but here I think it certainly is. Yeah, an Orbit Doctor is not going to be the worst thing in the world, just to be able to bash some Hippogriffs maybe in the future. Players if we do get sort of a Fairy Dragon Flying Machine Hippogriff dynamic. Maybe even some Griffins. Cannon Tower, that is a big one. If it comes up alongside the Arcane Tower, it makes it a lot easier to fight for Sock. Paladin level 3 now. These heroes are starting to get very, very scary on the human side of things, making it more and more necessary for 5-5 five five on the side of Colorful. It's getting kind of close. Trying to wrap around with the bears. Good bear army. But the upgrades are pretty disappointing. Uh, Colorful has been playing a wonderful game, but with so many resources, it seems like more upgrades should have been researched by yeah. now. Yeah, it's just always have him going, pretty much. He doesn't really need the resources for much else. And you have 800 banked. A third fight at this upper right. But this time around, Colorful has a lot more bears in store. How much can the heroes really do? I don't think enough. The supply is even, but obviously a lot of that's in tanks currently, it seems like. Yeah, it gets a cancel again. Dude, Colorful has been really showing up here in the later stages. Quite impressive. The staff count is still low. The maximum... Uh, power of a human army hasn't been unleashed yet. I did see the beginning of a transition earlier with frag shards, and indeed now mortars are coming. That is perhaps the most terrifying counter to drives in the game. Yeah, this is definitely what Sock needs. Oh my god, even the first hit does so yeah, much yeah. damage. The drives have to move around a little bit. Okay, they're taking a lot of damage. Sock might be strong enough even right now with the first mortar team. He does back away. The mana burns here looking excellent. Another one comes in. The MK doesn't have much left. The pal is dry already. MK in trouble indeed. Has to TP towards the main base. Exposing his expansion. But the expo is looking pretty sturdy. No shop here at the main base, though. The shop is at the expansion. The scroll would be very, very nice. Obviously, no priests for Sock currently. Just the paladin. Oh, he did buy a scroll before town portal. Okay, that's very, oh, very nice. nicely done from him. That's really cool. Well, the team caught out in the center. Paladin could probably reach for a holy light soon enough. What would be a sick play, although insanely difficult to micro, is uh, go for a Zeppelin and always put the Paladin in so he can't get burned. Yeah. But that is uh, a lot easier said than done. But this Paladin movement also could be a bit better, man. He's way too close to the Demon most of the time. The spell shield has been so nice just to, because obviously you would normally Stormbolt the Demon Hunter at the start of the fight just to disallow that mana burn initially, just so there's not as much time on the cooldown for it, but uh, he's always able to dodge that bolt at the start of the fight, always able to get that initial mana burn, no matter what. And then he could even use a push of vulnerability to dodge the second one, always have perfect uptime on the mana burns, and Colorful's making sure to do that. And he's about to have a three burn as well, so it could get any worse. If I may chime in for a second, he could constantly trigger it with the Orb of Darkness and also slow. Oh, is Orb of Darkness go on that? Okay. Yes. I didn't I didn't know that worked. Wow. That was a deep what? one. Not know. It works with Orb of Darkness? Yep. Wow. Why? I don't know. Oh! It just dies! Uh, this time, this, the Amulet did protect him. And there he goes. Rip. Gonna have to be a tavern rest. He's got the resources for it. He returns again. Had an invuln as well! Gets hammered once more. But now at least the thing oh. should be ready again. Mountain King now, got to be careful with all your heroes, he pulls it away, does save the heroes a little bit more attention being paid by Sock than was by Colorful, but still the Town Portal Force, still the supply, 75 apiece, one more drag goes down at the end. But uh, I didn't know, yeah, maybe put the orb on the Archmage then in that case, and just try to right away at the start of every fight. Because it happened in a game of Happy vs. Fly. Huh. Nobody knows that, Sock certainly doesn't know it. That would make it a sick item on the, on the Archmage in this yeah. very weird edge case. It, it was a big discussion, it was obviously also this map, it was a fight in the upper right, and I... Th th yeah, the Orb of, Orb of Darkness is triggering the spell shield. It's almost cool, I want to say that should be changed, but it's almost cool because it's an, only an interaction that can happen when there's this drop table, because they both come from the same drop table, so it's sort of like a counter built in. One item's really strong, one item's really weak, but at least it's a niche case for the weak item. Kind of cool, despite it being really weird. We try again. This might be the fourth time he's attempting the expansion up here. The Ancient of War sees it early. And yeah, new expansions will be needed because guess what? The mains have run out and Sock might be, might be bleeding out. If Colorful wins one more fight, I think he wins this game. Yeah, the heroes, so, so strong. Yeah, the, the denial of the third bases, that's really been the story for Colorful. It doesn't really matter much else what happened. The defense was good, 
the micro in the fights was acceptable. But really the denying the third base is what's kept him here and put him at an advantage now as he goes forward. Even started getting more upgrades. So 2-2 two, two. now done. And here goes Colorful with one heal scroll, but should be enough to win this fight. I would have to imagine. Oh, Let's he see. triggered it. Triggered the anti-magic, maybe with uh, control magic or something. Yeah. Paling the front line with Divine Shield. He also cannot get mana burn right now, but we do have a level 3 mana burn on the MK. He is over dry already. The Arcane is up. Yep, exactly. And the Cant Tower is soon to be as well. Everything's hurt for Sok already. Needs those scrolls. Arc Mage kind of stuck a little bit. Is there a Holy Light available? There is a ton of mana on the Paladin, actually. No mana burn on that. Demo had to take a lot of damage. The Cannon Tower now, as well as the Mortar Team, still up. There's just so much damage. I know the Colorful looks very sturdy right now. It's going to start taking a lot of damage from the Morts. The Dryads, dude. When the Mortars and the Cannon Tower connect, they absolutely start to bits. 3-2 upgrades on them and an aura. Really strong Dryad Bear army, but perhaps not quite strong enough. Mana superiority now on the human side. The Demon's out of the fight. Can he heal? Can he return? He's trying to. Staff back in, and maybe the item is ready as well. Double level up on the human side. Close fight here still. Maybe the spell shield again. He didn't have enough mana for the slow, it seems like, to trigger the spell shield. A lot of bears being microed out. Even the dryad lives as well. Panda forced the TP. Oh my god. Carful saved so many units. Can he get them in range of the TP though? Oh, MK is chasing. He's almost got a Storm Bolt ready. Knights as well. They are faster. Oh my god, dude. Everything here is so hurt. Moondrew's back at home, by the way. He's looking okay. He can heal up there once again. Dryad somehow did die. Did that just spawn a Skelly, by the way? Okay, interesting. He's got yeah, to finish his food here. He's got to get these. Okay, one Dryad, one bear. He, I would say, needs to get this bear here. Doesn't know. Not that many kills. He could have gotten a lot more, perhaps, if he was better with the Mountain King there. Team Hunter Mana Burn is looking really, really good. Panda close to level 6, by the way. Looks like Colorful has the lead now in this game, though we have a new expansion coming up for Sock. That one is coming and more towers. It's all about the top right here. And main base is dry now as well. Maybe they have even been for about a minute or a half. There's been so many fights going on here. Yeah, both players recovering. A lot of bears being saved. Experience on the Night Elf Heroes. Halfway to level 6 for both the Demon and the Panda. Even a little bit more than that on the Panda. Could this be what wins in the game now. Mountain King nowhere near level 5 yet. And Sorks now, I would say, insanely important to slow down the strong enemy heroes. And there is one of them. Demon gets back, gets in. Quick mana burn, 150 mana, gone. Spell shield, 40 second cooldown. Wait for that. And then it's time to go back. But by, th by that time, we're going to have a second can tower up here. Second can tower is so good. Yeah, human towers, I feel like for many years, underrated perhaps. Arcane and cannon towers in the late game, such a big difference compared to any other tower in the game. Demon Hunter does not wait for the spell shield. And it does a ton of damage to the casters right now. And it just seems like pure hero focus and relying on the towers is what Sock's doing. So hard to kite this, micro, uh, this army perfectly. He has to rely on the towers, really. Towers and slow is the only thing that can save him here. Not careful. There's almost another Storm Bolt. There is now. Oh, bolts the Panda instead. Mana Burn goes on. Doesn't really do anything there. Breath of Fire almost gets a lot of kills. The Paladin's got to be careful now, too. Invo Potion popped a little bit too late. Got off a Mana Burn again. The Demon is now exposed. Kind of. Panda made to level 6, so he's got the mana to pull the ultimate. Breath of Fire gets the kill and the split. And this might be the end. The Bears can now easily take out the Towers and Colorful, after a great game, will break the streak, as it seems. Yeah, very well deserved, very well played to Colorful here. Getting map three, as it seems. There's no way out of this one for Sock any longer. There's the GG, and that was a really, really nice game for both players. Damn, boys! 25 minutes once again proving that Twisted Meadows is and probably always will be the best map in all the pools. Sick hero exchanges, sick um, movements on the map. I thought the cannon towers will do it. When I saw the frag shot, cannon towers attacking these dryads, <laughs> that was quite something. But uh, colorful man, relentless attacks. How many times did he move to the upper right? Seven times, eight times and trying to tear it down? In the end, dude, it worked. Demon Hunter Panda, forever a reliable combo. Yeah, definitely. And he got there in the end with the level six as well. 
Um, despite being so underleveled the entire game, just got to reiterate, though, just how impressive it is. It's easy to think it's it's just a given to get all this scouting information, Colorful got, uh, when you can see the whole map like us, but for Colorful just to be there at the perfect time, even with the solo Dima Hunter um, initially denying the third base, and then again finding the top right. He ran straight to the top right as soon as the towers were getting built. Um, just very, very well done from Colorful with the scouting. Won him this game, honestly. Yeah, that was uh, such a well-played game. So close as well for most of it. It's hard even to identify mistakes here. And the losing player, Sock, what mistakes did he really make? It seemed like he made so many right moves. So many things were going in his favor. Maybe he didn't prioritize the third base quickly enough. Maybe if he had stayed with his army and crept the third base before all the bears were ready and all the hero levels for the night were ready. Um but no gold mine honestly, cancel, I think, was a was a huge one as well. It seems like uh, a small yeah, thing. Like that's maybe he probably could have delayed it about maybe a thousand gold, and that really gives those two tanks initially a lot more presence on the map once he hits tier three. I think that was on a weird to say in such a long game there were so many things happened. That might have been the biggest mistake, other than maybe not prioritizing that third base as you mentioned as much as he could have. I'd also argue abusing slow and the orb of darkness earlier against the emulator of spell shield could put a lot more damage yeah. on the demon that takes away presence of the demon then of course the leveling is slower and in the end we might not get a five and six hero combo there uh but yeah you can't know everything uh, even as a warcraft 3 programmer Yeah, cool. We saw a little bit more awareness of that towards the end, but it's just not something you can get used to, I suppose. We need, I think we need more maps with this, or am, am I risking something saying this? Maybe more maps with this drop table. <laughs> you guys probably disagree, but uh, it's cool to see these items. Staff of Silence, maybe a little bit busted, but uh, we didn't see it there. I would say more funky items could be pretty good. I would like to like somehow maybe rebalance it first before we do that. True, definitely. Yeah, self science is weird because it's totally OP when there's no dispel. And when the opponent doesn't have dispel, like for example, Mass Berserker Army. Uh, did I say that right? When there's no dispel, it's OP, but when there's dispel, it's useless. That's what I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can always save you that split second, Remo, since this Walker 3 Pro Gaming. It's, it's about all these split seconds. And we might need a split second more here to get the game on the road as we have the second join back in a row. Got a feeling that I might be causing it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm restarting as well, just to make yeah. sure. In the meantime, guys, you probably see that we have a new overlay. This is basically the foundation and we want to build upon it. Tomorrow and Tuesday, I got meetings with our designer and we have a thread up on our Discord where you can leave your feedback. And I gotta say, this feedback so far has been really, 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 really good. And you've been exposed for this for three to four days now. So if you guys have any feedback uh, or a wish list of what you'd like to see build upon this, please share it with us so we can build the best overlay of all the times. Of all the times. Yeah, we've gone through so many different iterations now. It's cool that there's always things to upgrade, always new things to find. Of course, we can thank Blizzard for <laughs> forcing us to make a couple of innovations now that we can't see things like like the shop, etc., cetera, uh, marketplace, mercenary camps, all those sort of things, and we sort of have to do it ourselves. But uh, always room to improve, which is cool. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it, in a deed. When you just said uh, we can thank Blizzard, Neo's toenails just curled up. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> never. Thank Blizzard, for, hey. thank Blizzard for screwing more things up. Hey, 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 hey. I thank them many times for taking the bottom UI away because I thought that was clunky and outdated. And, you know, the other things is something I have to live with now and we can work around it. I did give them a two-hour feedback video on their advanced overlay. They're probably still working on it. I guess. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of things that they can do, which of course helps out some other people in the community. They don't have access to this um, observer mode. So maybe they can get their, get, get their shit together eventually. But uh, we don't have to because we have this overlay, which is nice. That's right. And we got game four. It's still match points by Sock, but he is now not undefeated anymore. Is this where the big colorful comeback starts? Or was it just uh, the last power up before colorful is getting eliminated? Hammerfall. Let's go. 
All right, colorful. Dig deep now. Bring it back. Bring us to the fifth map decider, and this will have been quite the epic series. Started off rough, man. Seemed like the first two maps. Sock completely in control, but colorful is finding his groove, finding his footing again. This really was an outstanding game on map three. Was of course his map choice. Now Sock with his. Why? Why do we think Sock may favor Hammerfall quite a bit? I guess you could go for a very early expansion. Footman pulled to the south of his base. It could even be a three farm expansion sort of game. Maybe this is a, a map that is a little worse for Dima Hunter overall. We tend to see things these days. I think I feel like this may be more of a keeper map. And of course, we have seen Fire Lord first on, on this sort of map. So maybe he realizes Colorful's weakness in being a little one dimensional. And also, I think the expansion is pretty comfy for Sock as well. But I could be wrong in all regards. Who knows? Yeah, especially with the Demon Hunter, though, I think I agree. I always feel like the Demon Hunter only really looks, looks good early on if you get quick level 2, fairly quick level 3, and a bunch of items. Mm -hmm. um, map 3 was a counterpoint to that. Demon Hunter was looking very weak for the entire early game and mid game, with the exception of preventing the third, which was a crucial move that game. But uh, point is, here's going to get the first creep cam right away. Level 1.8 is going to pick up the first item. But where's he going to get the next? The greens in the middle are a big hassle to creep because of the poison. Maybe you creep the green outside your main. That would be level 2 and the next item. But it would take a long time. Time that Sock would use for the expansion. Which we have coming up pretty soon. Yeah, we're going to use simulation to creep this camp initially. Sock did pull with the footman the rock golem. And he's going to get a very, very fast expansion. Ooh, water elemental. Does that split? split? I guess it detonates. Close. Very That's close. Enough. Very close, yeah. But he does still get the experience colorful. And that gets him to level yeah. two. Class plus eight! Oh, that's such a sick item. That is such a sick item. That is the best item you could have found here by far. Where are where's colorful going? Is he trying to get into the main base right now? Or is he trying to catch... Is there an opening? Is there an opening next to the farm? There shouldn't be. This would just be a straight mistake. Unforced error. Did he think nope. that maybe Sok was going to pull the peasants back in thinking he was going to get harassed and he was going to catch them running back to the main base? That'd be way too heads up a play to be worth it, I feel like. Blaze it for 20. Whatever he may have thought of before, now it's time to go up against these peasants. Man, the cost is 8. Are so good. Look at these right clicks, dude. Look at them right clicks. Really lucky find here for Sok, which is working out really well for him. And also, great micro on the peasants. Not losing any of them, but they're all bruised. Team Hunter is thirsting for round two. Yeah, this is honestly, I'll say it. I'm going to say it. This is how every single harass on every map should go. Dima Hunter versus human. You should not lose any peasants unless there's ranged units, unless there's a keeper. You should just always save them exactly like Sock just did. I feel like there's no excuse to lose more than maybe one peasant. When I see people lose 20 peasants to a Dima Hunter emulation, just build the town all next to the trees and do this every game, you guys. Come on. And also he's got the tower built so the demon can't yep, get in perfect. back there. So he's got the nice little uh, safety nook back in there. Um, really, really good play here so far. Suck with a wonderful early game. But we also saw that on Twisted. Doesn't have to be the end of things. Reveal on the archer. Gonna pressure that one away. Won't get the kill, but still getting it away from his expansion. So there's no scouts. So there's no staff teleportation potential. Demon Hunter goes back in. This is where you can start to find some peasant kills when they're forced to mine. He's going to maybe find it, but the immediate reaction from Sock, one peasant. Nice. Damn. Saves. So well it's... done from Sock. How hard are you fanboying right now? Love it. Love it. This is what you should do. Three farm expo, build the town hall safe like this. He's going to go Dima Hunter. He shouldn't kill any peasants. This is just exactly what you should do. And the footman scout as well on top of him, Sock, has been excellent. He knows everything going on. He knows the position of the ancient war. I would be surprised if he didn't find this tree of life as well. He hasn't spotted yet. Footy was too hurt, pulled it back. AM is close, but he's not quite there. He's got mana for water metal right now. Takes out the Ancient of Wars, makes creeping for the demon basically impossible right now. Except for the greens. But at least, tree should be finishing. Yeah, this is really an exclamation point on the series for Sock. He did drop his first map of the series, but so far this has been picture perfect play and then some. Except for, as you mentioned, finding that tree of life. He didn't get it. I don't think he would have been able to get the cancel with just the Archmage on level 2, of course. But now he's going to heal up his footman, going to get more mana. And then we'll see what Sock does next for Colorful. He did reach tier 2, despite losing the Ancient War, despite not getting much done on the harass. Maybe this pressure with the Naga can do something. 
There's of course the big downside when you go for an instant expo like this, like we saw by Sock. You're gonna be low level for a long time. Level 2 you get quick, and level 3 you don't get for a long while. Team Hunter's in. Once again, this is round 3. How many peasants can he kill now? I think this was the first one of the game, actually. Insane saves so far. Simulation is running, but not anymore. The mana is gone, the arcane here did its dirty work, and two peasant kills is all you have to show for it. And that was really the, that's the pressure. That's it. He didn't go panda. He went for the stronger early tier two stage hero in the Naga and got the two peasants. Now the Demir has to heal up. He could come back in after healing up, but he still needs to creep that expansion with the Tree of Life. And now Sock probably just going to march across the map. Might want to get level three Archmage first, but that would take quite a while. He'd probably have to even use Militia to creep a big enough camp to get it. But we'll see. Players' forces are under attack. Naga seems like he still has uh, to do some work here to really assert dominance in the middle of the map, get some big items, get a lead on the heroes. Naga will fall off later. I think Sok has no worries to go late game, ultra late game in this game, because there's no panda to fear this time. Sok goes to a very specific camp. Doesn't go for any of the greens close to his base. Doesn't go for the orange camp close to his base. Goes to this one. Is this one going to give him level three? And then can he go towards the main and do some pressure? Doesn't seem like he's going to get level 3. He needs a little bit more experience. Oh, oh, like perfect. Almost saw him, yeah. but didn't. He checked the shop, wasn't there. It was nighttime. Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. And he actually... Oh, yeah, he did get level 3. Didn't think yes, he would. Yeah, he knew the perfect amount of experience that he needed. He knew the exact camp. I don't think any other green would have gotten it for him. But uh, gets it and goes towards the shop. He can grab that first heal scroll. Naga will clear out the expansion. So Colorful's going to be on two base, but Sock is already tier two. Remember what happened in map one now. Could be happening in map four as well. And a Sock special, by the way. Pally second. <laughs> Interesting. Pally second, rifle play. He's been playing quite a bit in the past, especially against under one base. I think it's been looking really good. Normally considered to be a very bad matchup against the Demon Hunter. But... He doesn't seem to mind. Yeah. When you said but, I was like, I don't know if there's an actual argument that it is good at all. <laughs> I thought you were going to file it. But yeah, no, I just don't think it's very good. But uh, we'll see, especially because he's only on single racks riflemen right now. This isn't pure rifles. This is two sanctums. This is building the second one now. All right, let him, let him, let him cook, I suppose. Are they trying to cook up some levels up north? With the footies and rifles, can creep the smaller camps here pretty easy. Lots of gold on Sark. He's lacking the lumber. Although now arrived on tier 2 with the buildings up. This is going to rectify itself soon enough. Team Hunter again looking pretty weak, man. Again stuck on level 2. Again pretty weak items. We'll see if it can once more find his uh, true power in the late game. Yeah, I love the ring of regen as well. Going to be nice too. Make this harass last even longer, or at least allow the Archmage to stay out on the map longer. Second Sanctum finally up for Sock was low on Lumber for a second there, but as you mentioned, not going to struggle with Lumber now that he's got all of his tech buildings up. Colorful, not going to struggle either now that he has the Shredder. His two base economy is actually cooking now, so maybe Colorful can catch up in supply pretty soon here. Players, of course, will again be needed pretty soon, but they are almost ready for production. Well, the Pally is clearing out a third, possible third base, and gets to level three perfectly uh, fitting such a base. This is a map where we see quite a bit of third base play because both those gold mines are close to the main, um, but it seems like Sok has no lumber for that, really. He's been starting quite a bit with lumber, which also makes tier three, if ever he wanted to, difficult to get to. Tell you what, though. If he wants to go tier 3 for the master upgrades and a blood mage third, that could be pretty sick. Be cool if we got to that stage. Could also grab a shredder right now to allow him to get to that stage in the game. Colorful on the other side. Still power creeping. Maybe taking the red right now. Looking for perhaps a health stone here. Could be nice. No words maybe to continue creeping the map. But there's not a lot to creep left over really. Just kind of his rock golem. And then greens scattered across. Sock 73 versus 54. Ten and a half minutes. This is where he goes. Yeah, this is strong timing. He's bringing the ivories. This is it. Sock is bringing down the hammer. Wants to finish this series right here. Punches ticket to the grand final. Colorful feels forced to engage. Takes out a priest, but the archers, of course, easily getting killed off here. Wants to soften up the human army. 
before the real fight begins. Oh, didn't make it to the shop yet. No Tome of... No, he did retrain. Never mind. He Never mind. I was panicking a bit there. He did get the Tome of Retrain. He does have Mana Burn now, which is certainly going to be needed. Okay, Sock goes forward. And it feels like whatever hero we add here, this would still be a strong timing. I suppose Paladin, Blood Mage, Naga, whatever. Mountain King. Who cares? As long as you hit this timing at, you know, around the 10 and a half, 11 minute mark, it's still very, very good. So 10 supply advantage. Shredder goes down, but there's enough lumber for Colorful to make it through this push. And if he can make it through this push, he can make it through the game. So that's all that really matters currently. Footman need to be cleaned up, but defend is stronger than you might give it credit for at this stage. This Footman are going to take a lot of mana from this Naga to kill. Chop goes down. Great position here for Sok as well. The bears are kind of stuck in this little uh, pathway between the tree lines and having a tough time connecting. No roar either. Demon on the front line still tanking well. Blood Mage is indeed now out of mana. I must say, both this map and last, Blood Mage positioning could be approved upon. But then finally going to be cleaned up a little bit. Heal scroll there used. Towers are up. Sok is tight, trying to work on that positioning a little bit here. Seems like Colorful is maybe caught up in supply. Can he hold on? Is two guard towers enough to secure this positioning for Sock? Got a scroll of healing and a Tome of Retraining. It's going to be time for Blizzard in just a moment. So the AM. But he doesn't have much mana. It's not going to be that much Blizzard raining down. Colorful has built a huge army now. Colorful might be able to hold this when he collapses with everything. I think he will, and I'm, I'm sorry to say, I just don't think the Paladin is going to be good enough if this push does not work. Blizzard is going to make up for the lacking damage, but a single sand, or single barracks rifleman with no strong second hero is so weird to me, but uh, there must be something I'm missing for now. Sock continues to hold on. Sock has a supply advantage. The Wisps! Oh! That's a triple. Level four. That's level four. That's a huge level up, actually. He needed that. He had not very much mana. That's going to force the hand for Colorful. He's flanking around from the top side. At nighttime here, he's got superior vision. And then he goes. Blizzard, catch the hero. Demon Hunter in front. And a lot of the bears. Oh, the splitting here could be a bit better by Colorful. Now he's getting past the Blizzard. Trying to at least. Man on the AM is slow. He's got one more Blizzard. Could use it right now. The rivals are tanking the damage against the bears and what they want. But also the bears taking lots of damage in return from the towers and everything else. Just doing so much damage. This retrain was huge, and the towers helping out a lot too. Sock, very, very tanky here with the paladins and the priest heal. And Colorful seemed to have a massive army that could deal with this. I'm so surprised that he wasn't able to break through. It seemed very likely, but Sock holds on. The blizzard makes up for the lack of damage. Pally back from the shop. Having the shop here in an aggressive push, push position is so good for the human. That's the next heal scroll. That he's got available. He's got two of them. Does an inborn on the Paladin. AM, if he's out of position, perhaps Colorful can try to force TP. He's attempting to do it right now. Where's the cold arrow? Turn it off to have more folk lightning. I don't think it would have been enough, anyways, to force the AM out. Especially with Holy Light, certainly wouldn't have been. Kind of forgot about that. So he might be going to the grand finals here if he can kill this Tree of Life. This is what it comes down to. Colorful with perhaps one more chance to defend. He's got no lumber. All the wisps that died repairing earlier it means Colorful has 1,100 gold and no lumber. He can't reinforce, and that's oh, exactly what he needs to do right damn. now. Damn. What a painful macro error that cost him here in the end. Yeah, the Shredder was at the expansion. The AM took yep. out the Shredder at the start of the push. The Shredder should have been in the main. Easy now, of course, to identify. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that is going to cost him the expansion and might as well be the game. Demon gets to level 4 at least, but he's fighting in the shadows of three towers. Bears all slowed, getting picked apart one by one. And the human army standing strong. Oh man, to be eliminated from this tournament with 1,500 gold in the bank and 28 lumber is painful for Colorful. Yeah, if the Shredder was in the main. Or if he had just staffed it at the start, if he had the opportunity to save it. All this gold would have been going into probably another orb, maybe you know four, five, six more bears. Oh, what a difference that could have made! But uh, now it's 73 versus 59, two base against one, and it's looking more and more likely like Sock, deservedly so, is going into the grand finals. And yeah, this game was a bit touch and go, wasn't it? The Blood Mage, when he would, got burned twice, all of a sudden didn't look that impressive anymore. But the towers coming up, the Blizzard retrain, and then good positioning, really changed everything. Colorful will try one more time. 
But the bears are hurt. He's only at 60. Supply blocked as well. And no lumber to speak of. Okay, what is the play? Wonderful might be close to out of it, but not entirely out of it. He's going to find reinforcements with the dryads. Try to find some levels on his heroes. He can get maybe up to 5-5. Five, five. Continue to use those dryads in that four point. Need to find pickoffs. The human army is not very mobile. This is what we've seen abused most of all. When someone's behind against a human player, they try to catch out reinforcements. Try to just play with their movement speed advantage. That's what Colorful's going to attempt to do right now. He's going towards the main base to find reinforcements as well now. Sok making use of this time with lots of space in the south. He's expanding down here. We've seen this cheeky expansion kind of uh, backfire. Be a bit of a curse for some of the humans in the past, early stages of this tournament, last week. But Sok here has such an insane lead. It's hard to imagine this one getting away from him. With three base economy, it's going to be even more tough than it once was. Staff out. On one of the units there, Naga takes a lot of damage, but Colorful, if he has to TP out, he might as well GG out at this stage. He needs to stay aggressive on the map. He needs to keep trying to find little pickoffs here and there. That's the only way he's going to get back into this game, is by continuing to be aggressive, and then maybe finding another Tree of Life somewhere. But the main base is going to be out in uh, like less than four minutes, so he might just have to wait for his Tree of Eternity and then walk it on over. So setting up more towers seems to be the right call. It appears to be a little about hit and run right now. Demon Hunter finds exposed peasants at his former second base. The towers will shoo him away sooner or later, and the sorcerers will make that easier. While the main force for Colorful is hitting the main base, destroys the towers, and will force a response. Yeah, so it's nice damage. Maybe he can supply block. Oh, no, he's not going to be able to because it's 92 supply max capacity for Sock right now. Peasants are going to go down. Mid trying to defend on this lone sum. Look, Lightning going to find a couple more kills. And Demon Hunter also slowing down the base, as you mentioned earlier. Oh, that Blizzard, though, is doing a lot. It's also hurting Peasants, however. So Colorful now finally forced to TP, but he's bought himself as much time as he can with this little of an army. I will say credit to Colorful for holding on here for dear life. A player's forces are under attack. Colorful, is there really a way still back into this game? He is at least rich. Maybe he's trying to outlast the main economy. But yeah, Sok is uh, still going to be mining a plenty. Well, perhaps not a plenty, because uh, main and natural expire at the same time for Sok, which is in around three minutes, a little bit less. But there's so much gold, dude. There is so much gold. It seems like Sok could easily expand another time. Yeah, I feel like the one way for Colorful to be in this game still would be if he wasn't in upkeep right now, then he could just bank all the gold that he has in his main, and then of course, as you mentioned, the two bases will run out for Sock, and Colorful's going to know that detail, of course. Second orb now for Colorful, making him stronger than he once was. 68 supply, not the worst situation, but he's going to lose a couple of bears here, potentially. And the moon juice is looking rough, baby. It's been a long daytime. Nighttime is coming, but it's still pretty far away. The Dryad hit squad out in the map to try to catch units. Can't really put pressure on buildings. That's what Sok is doing right now with the rifle army. And guess what? Also some mortar teams in. Good upgrades, giant force, strong items. Last stand for Colorful, and it looks like one of desperation. Best positioning he could get, I would say. Drives in the back, Dima Hunter in the back for the mana burn angle. The blizzard is hitting not all the bears currently, but they're all very, very low indeed. Sock is being back into a little bit of a corner, which he doesn't want to be in ideally. Could start to lose some units. The paladin and the priest are making that near impossible. Archimage needs a holy light there. Heal scroll used to save the units in the front, and the Dima Hunter running out of steam here. Goes down, and with that, GG, and Sock is into the Grand Finals. A nice try to Colorful, but not able to pull it out. First time Grand Finals! Yep, that's a good stretch, my boy. He did it, even though he, his uh, sheets got a bit dirty there with the one loss on Twisted. What a flawless game, pretty much, and what a nice way to bring in the Paladin. He's been doing that on ladder quite a bit. Now in tournament stages, and it looked... Maybe a little weak at times, but late game, what really shines, level 2 devotion, man. Oh, 
11 armor spellbreakers with priests yeah. with invis with holy light how are you supposed to kill anything once the strategy is up it looked a little dicey here and there if he's not getting the level four for the level two brilliance or i can see a better outcome for colorful who by no means played bad but didn't have really a grab on this game had the wrong read very very early on couldn't get any passants and then it was a big but slow snowball it was a fun match though it was a fun series colorful unfortunately eliminated sock avengers leon yumi hawk finally a human can win an idol